So, I turned 30 today. To be honest, I still feel like I'm 25. While I know I still have much to learn, 30 years of life have offered me many nuggets of wisdom and heart reminders, I guess you could say, that I've learned and tried to live by every day. For context, I am of the Myers-Briggs personality ISFJ, otherwise known as the Defender or Nurturer, and an Enneagram 2, sometimes known as the Helper or the Giver. If you're either of these types, maybe a lot of what I'm about to share will really resonate with you, but hopefully if you're watching this, you'll find at least something that resonates with you. Meanwhile, enjoy some visuals of me painting stuff from our garden, where my family's been growing lots of cool things. I thought that it would be fitting for a video about growth. Also, sorry for the poor audio quality. I'm literally recording these memos in my car after work almost every day for like the past two, three weeks because it was the only time I could find to discreetly record this. <laughs> okay, without further ado, here are 30 lessons by 30. 1. Drive like you know you suck at it. You can never be too careful on the road. My last and worst car accident was self-inflicted. I was driving out of a parking structure, going down a spiral, while starting up my GPS at the same time and I ran one of my rear car doors into the wall of the parking structure and caved in the door. Since then, I've been super careful about not multitasking when I'm driving. I tell myself that my objective is to make it from point A to point B in one piece. Don't get cocky when driving. Two. Don't be afraid of ordering food or paying at the cash register. The service worker is probably more nervous than you are. When I was younger, I don't know why, but I always felt self-conscious whenever I was ordering food. I guess I had this fear of having potentially awkward interactions. And it wasn't until I started working that I realized as a service worker, you have much higher stakes than the customer. So as a customer, you have nothing to worry about. 3. Say no as often as you say yes. Stop being so nice. It's better to be genuine than to be nice to everyone all the time. We're all different people with different preferences and it's okay to disagree or back out of something that you're really not interested in. By prioritizing the things that are important to you, you're gonna have to say no to some things. 4. Harness your calming, quiet energy. I had a patient's family member tell me once that they really enjoyed my quiet energy, and I realized that my quietness could be a strength amidst a world of noise. 5. Life is too short to be over meticulous or to worry about stupid things no one else will remember in a day. Sometimes I have this fear of committing a faux pas and feeling paralyzed by it when, honestly, everyone else is more concerned about their own issues. And sometimes it's better to tell yourself that nobody is paying attention to you. 6. Do something for yourself every day, no matter how small. Or at least give yourself something to look forward to each week. For me, I like to wind down by preparing my tea for the next day or watching my favorite YouTube channels in the shower. 7. Keeping busy may be a form of distraction and avoidance of doing introspective emotional work and self-reflection. You can explore the world as an escape from exploring the world of your mind. Sometimes it's really hard to sit with your own thoughts and work through and process your emotions because it can be really daunting and vulnerable. It's like doing housekeeping for the soul. 8. Before buying something, consider the emotional payoff to cost ratio. Will buying that thing only give you momentary happiness 
or lasting happiness? Can you potentially buy something less expensive and be equally or close to equally happy? I find that this mentality helps me overcome any rash consumerist tendencies. 9. I've learned that gift giving has become one of my top love languages, and I have a rule for giving gifts, which is give something the person never knew they needed, but would spark joy for them when they receive it, or something the person always wanted, but would never buy it for themselves. Also, it can have at least two of the three following characteristics handmade, nice, or something thoughtful. 10. Choose which friends to invest in wisely. Invest in others only as much as they invest in you. If you overinvest in someone, be prepared for potentially feeling hurt. 11. You don't have to know the answers to everything. Just know where you can look to find the answers and circle back whenever you need to. 12. Consider whether you're doing something for external validation or for internal fulfillment. If you're also an Enneagram 2 or can relate to people-pleasing tendencies, you might be able to understand this. I often have to check myself and ask why I'm doing what I'm doing. 13. Be kind to everyone. You never know what they're going through and you might just make their day. Working in a hospital, I run into a lot of patients in a given day, and being in a hospital is kind of sucky. I always think about how I can give my patients even a moment of relief, as I don't want to make their experience any worse than it already is. 14. You're never too old to make mistakes or learn. I think when you're young, you tend to put your parents or other adults in your life on a pedestal and like view them as these perfect human beings when that's really not the case. When you're an adult, even when you're a parent, even when you're 60, 70, on your deathbed, I'm sure there's always something that you can learn to become a better human being. 15. Sometimes it's good to have low expectations. It's better to be pleasantly surprised than sorely disappointed. 16. Having the best tools doesn't automatically make you successful in your craft. Putting in the work does. As an artist, it's easy to fall into the trap of, oh, I need to buy better paints or better paintbrushes or better paper and so on in order to be able to make art when really you just need to put in the work and put in the time and grow from experience and ultimately you will become a better artist. I think that real creativity is what you can make out of the tools that you already have at your disposal. 17. The world isn't black and white. We should be open to nuance and Seek out the gray areas to fill our knowledge, expand our understanding, and increase our empathy. It's easy to paint with a broad brush, oversimplify things, and make generalizations. As humans, our instinct is to categorize and think in dichotomies. It's us versus them. If you're not with us, you're against us. No one is really 100% good or 100% bad. We're all some shade of gray. 18. It's okay if work is just a means to help you enjoy life outside of work. For some people, their work and career is their life and it's personally fulfilling to them, which is totally fine. Props to them. While I feel very fortunate to be in the field that I'm working in, it's not like super personally fulfilling to me. Like, yes, it's rewarding to help patients, and I enjoy learning and growing professionally, but it's more something that funds my passions and hobbies outside of work, like art, music, exploring, and building intentional relationships with people. 
19. Take more staycations. I found that staycations are a very fulfilling and restful use of my time that allows me to relax and engage in my hobbies without spurging a ton of money on a vacation. A co worker once told me, Don't just rest so that you can work. Also, rest so that you can have some fun. There's more to life than just work, and you need to rest enough to even have the energy to enjoy it. 20. Anything can be made an idol, whether it's work, money, romantic relationships, social status, reputation, your looks, people's perceptions of you. Material possessions, your kids, what you devote your attention to can reveal your values, your insecurities, and your unhealthy attachments. Life is about balance and accepting that you never really have full control of it. So, why not put your faith in God, the one who knows best how to orchestrate your life for your own good? 21. Sometimes the goal is just to be good enough. If your goal is to be perfect, then you will always be disappointed and you will never be satisfied. Cue Angelica Schuyler. <laughs> If you know, you know. One of my favorite YouTuber violinists, Ray Chen, has a quote which says Success is self driven, but it can also be self given. Find your balance. 22. If you're having a bad day, ground yourself in what you know to be true about who you are. It's more important to be a good person than to be good at your job. Don't let one person's opinion of you define you. Literally, you can do everything right, and there is probably someone out there who isn't pleased. And you know what? That's not your problem. 23. Every opportunity, whether you deem it as a success or a failure, will lead to growth if you let it do so. Sometimes rejection may be a redirection. If I get through the day or gone through a trial, having learned or done something new, then I will consider it a win. 24. One of my favorite animated shows is Avatar The Last Airbender. My favorite character is Uncle Iroh of the Fire Nation. He's always dropping pieces of wisdom like it's hot, <laughs> pun intended. One of his quotes says, It is important to draw wisdom from different places. If you take it from only one place, it becomes rigid and stale. Understanding others will help you become whole. As someone who has to navigate between different spheres of influence on a daily basis, whether it's racial, cultural, religious, political, generational, etc., I try to stay open minded, see things more objectively, or at least try to understand where someone is coming from, even if I don't agree with them. It sounds cliche, but I think it's the only way we can live in harmony. 25. Do not fear death, but fear that you have not truly lived, because tomorrow is never guaranteed. Instead of finding ways to live longer, maybe we ought to find ways to live better. Medical technology is a great thing, don't get me wrong, but sometimes I. Wonder if the more we are fixated on living longer, the more we take the important things for granted. And yes, after watching Puss in Boots The Last Wish, I was further convicted in this belief. 26. Let go of the desire to feel needed and indispensable. The world will find a way to run without you. Sometimes the best thing to do for yourself is to just not care so much. As an Enneagram 2 and ISFJ, I naturally enjoy helping others, which is all well and good, 
but to an extreme, sometimes I find myself helping others not so much for their sake, but more for my own sake to satisfy my need to be needed and wanted. There is a sense of pride that comes with serving others. The idea of, oh, what would you do without me, comes to mind. And the real answer to that is probably, they'll be okay without you. 27. My worth is not found in whether I've accomplished more or less than others. It's found in who I am as a person. I believe that as a Christian, my sole purpose in this world is to extend love to others and point them to follow Jesus Christ. Anything else that I accomplish or fail to accomplish in this world might have worldly significance, but it has absolutely no eternal significance. And I think that's such a relief because it takes the pressure off of having to be super accomplished and basically win man's approval versus God's approval. God loves you and treasures you no matter how much you fall short or how much you exceed expectations. 28. You weren't created to find your purpose. You were created to serve many purposes. And for that, you have so much to offer to the world. 29. Regret of yesterday and worry for tomorrow are like two thieves robbing us of our energy to do what we can today. It's good to be prepared, but at a certain point, you begin to prepare out of fear, and it becomes crippling and counterproductive. Just do your best. That's all any of us can really ask of ourselves. Last but not least, 30. You are not responsible for someone else's happiness. Let me repeat that. You are not responsible for someone else's happiness. Each person is responsible for their own happiness. You can encourage and try to help someone all you want, but at the end of the day, they're the only ones who can help themselves. Relieve yourself of that burden. It's true. You should do what makes you happy, whatever that might mean to you. And if you don't, are you even living? <laughs>